Hello there. Hello, Roberto. Hello. Uh, am I am I audible? Yes, I can hear you now. Thank you so much. Okay, 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 okay. So uh, we will have a conversation today in English because we have a friend and a guest from Mexico. His name is uh, Roberto, and he is an activist and also he is a researcher on sustainable development goals. Uh, Roberto, please introduce yourself to my friends on Facebook. Yes, thank you so much for having me. I'm Roberto Hernandez. I'm 23 years old and I'm from Mexico City. I'm an SDGs consultant and researcher and activist for climate change and for the sustainable development goals. Uh, thank you, Roberto, for our uh, introduction. Uh, can you please tell us something about uh, the recent pandemic as it has hit the world very hard? The third wave has come and uh, what are your views about uh, COVID? Yes, as, as we were talking out of uh, this life, it is really important to highlight how it's everything related to COVID-19 because um, it is obvious to see that there are two different worlds. One after and one before the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we used to be uh, more freedom to uh, choose where to go, what to wear, and um, who be out with, uh, for example. But as the result of this COVID-19 pandemic, you know, there are the, some kind of restrictions to mobility and some kind of liberties with um, quarantine and other stuff. But more specifically, when we start talking and making a deep analysis on how uh, COVID-19 has impacted our lives, we see that it's not only our lives, but we talk about a collective being, when not only my life, but also all Mexicans' people's life, and all people from, uh, and I don't know, from Egypt, from the United States, from Canada, from Ghana, from different countries. So we have different points of view to, to start analyzing and to say how COVID-19 pandemic affects uh, our lives. But for example, I would say uh, a deeply and, and easy way to see uh, it affect on human rights. We now have affect millions of children with no access to education, not only because the education translated to a virtual uh, place, but some, some students and some children all over the world does not have access to these uh, technologies, we know that there's a huge gap of inequality among all societies. So that's why we need to, to, to understand what are the sustainable development goals, how are the sustainable development goals related to our daily life and how we as individuals can achieve and improve everyone's people, everyone's life by um, adopting the sustainable development goals. Uh, since you are a researcher and uh consultant on SDGs. Uh, please tell us something about SDGs. Uh, what are SDGs? Uh... Yes, for sure. Um, you know, um, it is important to understand before talk about the SDGs, to understand social context. Um, as I was mentioning with the COVID-19, <clears throat> we now realize we are all different. We all have differences and we combine, we, do things together with these differences. So um, to understand what are the sustainable development goals, we need to understand these differences, as I mentioned. And not, not only say we are different, but we are different and we can do things together. We can improve and we can go forward with our differences. Um, so uh, the sustainable development goals are specifically 17 um, concrete goals, 17 uh, specific goals that tackle, that um, focus in, in the specific problems in our societies. So for example, with SDG number one, we have zero, um, no poverty, zero hunger, gender equality, climate action, past justice and strong institutions. So we can see there are different topics uh, according to each uh, situation, depending on the country or where we are uh, main focus on. So. Uh, for example, in Mexico, we uh, have we are working with SDG 6, 16, which is um, peace, um, justice, and strong institutions. So there's a correlated between each one. Everyone, all the SDGs are connected and interrelated. 
there's no SDG more important than another. All are really deeply interconnected, just as human rights. I talk and I say that uh, the SDGs are uh, human rights 3.0 because before these uh, SDGs, we have the Millennium Development Goals. So um, to understand is a, is a plan, a worldwide plan, um, a declaration where all countries compromise to reduce this inequalities gap to have a better future for all. You talked about uh, climate change. So how climate change is impacting the uh, globe and uh, um, <clears throat> what can we do about this? Yes, um, thank you for, for asking that. I think, um, as, I, as I mentioned, this interconnection and how everything is related, we can relate climate change. And this is a, based on scientific studies. We can relate climate change uh, to the pandemic of COVID-19. So, um, you know, and this is easy to consult right now with any browser or any uh, web search. When we see that COVID-19 pandemic surge on this web market in Wuhan, China, but the question is, where is this all wildlife coming from? Where is this all wildlife going to? So why we as humankind have the need to uh, to go to this deep forest, the virgin forest that has been interrupted and unmolested for years and years. And now we, because of globalization and because of um, this bad relationship that we have with our environment, um, we trespass that boundary between wildlife and the cities and communities. So um, that's an effect of climate change where uh, thanks to deforestation and thanks to um, by the loss of biodiversity, we are facing now huge problems and it's obviously interconnected with the COVID-19 pandemic. So to understand climate change, we need to realize it's a complex problem, it's a problem composed by different problems, not, not, these are no new problems, these are problems that we have developed through uh, years and years and decades of um, the way that we were consuming and producing on uh, this planet, the way that we approach and take advantage of the res of natural resources. So um, that's that's how we need to understand climate change. And I, I was giving uh, this example, if you give me one more minute, I would love to give this example when um, to realize how, how different how different is the knowledge of climate change. If we talk up to any politician, no matter what kind of or which country there, there might be, if we talk a politician about what is climate change, we will have like this kind of conversation when they'll say, oh, OK, climate change is a um, complex situation where um, there are different factors and it's been going through years and they won't concrete in a specific concept. But the difference between the new generations is when we talk and we ask them about what is climate change, they will give it a specific uh, aspect of climate change, like uh, um, deforestation, like uh, sea level uh, risings and the loss of biodiversity. So there's a huge gap between um, this cognitive uh, task, as, as we call it in science, uh, about how can we approach as a society, as a whole thing, to climate change. So um, I would say there is, there is hope. There's not a message of loss. There is a message of hope, but there's a message of action about climate change. Thank you. Uh, we talked about three different areas, and uh, now I want you to conclude this uh, live session with your message for the people who are watching us and uh, for the others who will watch us later. Yes, uh, first of all, let me thank you for uh, having this space and have this inky to, to talk about sustainable development goals and specifically to talk about climate change. And to end this conversation, to give some advices and some recommendations to uh, the audience and the people that's watching us, uh, there's one thing that will, that will make a difference between our generation and the next generation, and that's education. So we need to focus to give education, to give free education, to give quality education, 
to all people, no matter if you're old and no matter if you're a newborn, we need to have this access to education to all generations and education that it's uh, free, that it's integral and that's based on science. So uh, that advice also comes with responsibility. <clears throat> We, uh, we can not only expect the government to give us that education, we need um, due to the current situation and um, all that's happening around the world, uh, citizens need to take this, um, this inquietude to educate themselves. So I invite everyone to educate ourselves, to read a book, to research a little bit more, to compromise with uh, global, um, global health and global progress and uh, be aware of all changes that is happening right now and it's going to happen because we are not taking action for the SDGs, we are not taking action for climate change. And there's a lot of, inform of misinformation and information that it's not been reached all the people. So um, it, that will be my last advice to educate ourselves, to share this education, to have free access of education and share knowledge because we might get a lot of knowledge, but if we don't, we don't share it, if we don't spread that knowledge, that activity, that exercise just doesn't work. We need to spread knowledge with everyone. And as Malala Yousaf Said Noble, uh, Peace Spread says, one teacher, one child can change the world. So I believe that, I believe that uh, these the small conversations can change uh, people's opinion, can change that inquietude to research a little bit more. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Roberto. I hope we will have other conversations like that and uh, to educate ourselves and uh, others who will watch us. Thank you so much for your precious time. You rendered your time and uh, see you again, inshallah. Bye bye. Thank you so much, Mr. Mohammed. Till the next time. See you. Bye bye. <laughs>